Good day, students. I welcome you to study session 5 of NSA 307, which will discuss nutrition of the infant and young child. In the previous study session, you have been introduced to nutrition throughout the life cycle. In this session, you will learn about optimal infant and young child feeding during the first two years of life. As the first two years of life are critical to breakdown of cycle of malnutrition from generation to generation. Key feeding issues including optimal breastfeeding and optimal complementary feeding will be looked at in some detail. In this session, you will learn more about key messages you can give the mother regarding optimal feeding practices during the different contacts that you have with her. At the end of this study session, you will be able to describe breastfeeding practice for infant and young child. You will be able to list the key messages to be given to mothers on optimal breastfeeding. You will be able to discuss the benefits of breastfeeding for baby. You will be able to list the benefits of breastfeeding for mothers, children, and the community. You will be able to describe breastfeeding problems and, their, and, and, and identify their solutions. You will be able to list the key messages to be given to mothers on optimal complementary feeding. Sit back and enjoy this lecture. Looking at best feeding practice for infant and young child, optimal feeding of children during the first two years of life is critical to break the cycle of malnutrition from generation to generation. The first 24 months is recognized as being the most important window of opportunity for establishing healthy growth. Infant and child feeding practices are major determinants of the risk of malnutrition. A very large proportion of women do not practice optimal breastfeeding and complementary feeding behavior for their children. About a third of babies do not receive breastfeeding within one hour of birth, and only one in three children aged four to five months are exclusively breastfed. This practice can cause infant death as a result of poor breastfeeding habits. You as a nurse, you have a critical role to play in helping to address this problem by, by counseling a mother on practicing optimal breastfeeding and complementary feeding behavior for their children. Equally important are the serious problems related to when complementary food is introduced because a large majority of infants are giving such food too early or too late. At 6 to 8 months of age, only one in two children is consuming solid or semi-solid food. Much of the inappropriate breastfeeding and complementary feeding behavior is actually due to lack of knowledge rather than practical or financial constraints. You and you will have plenty of opportunities in your work to give mothers the best information possible. Looking at the global and national recommendations for child feeding during the first 24 months. In 2002, World Health Organization developed global recommendations for infant and young child feeding. These recommendations stress on the following. Ex exclusive breastfeeding during the first six months Exclusive breastfeeding is defined as giving only breast milk and no other food or fluid including water except medication. Also, you start optimal complementary feeding at 6 months with continuation of breastfeeding for the first 2 years or beyond. Complementary feeding means giving solid or semi-solid food to a child in addition to breast milk. What are the key messages for optimal breastfeeding practices? An important part of a nurse job is connected to helping mothers and caregivers to feed their children in the most effective way possible. It is therefore important that you help them to understand the importance of optimal breastfeeding. I will highlight, I, I will highlight the key messages that you need to explain to mother in order to achieve optimal breastfeeding. You should make sure that she understands the, that, this, that these behaviors are important and that you have given her the underlying reasons for each of these key messages. You'll be using these messages when you're educating and um, counseling mothers. The mother initiates breastfeeding within one hour of birth. The mother, the mother breastfeeds frequently day and night. Looking at the first one, initiating breastfeeding within one hour of birth. It protects the infant from diseases by providing the thick yellowish first milk, that is colostrum, which is equivalent to the infant's first vaccine. It also helps to expel the placenta more rapidly and reduces blood loss by the mother. It helps to expel meconium, which is the infant's first two, and stimulates further breast milk production and keep the newborn warm through skin-to-skin -skin contact. Then the mother breastfeeds frequently day and night. 
The mother should allow the infant to breastfeed on demand. This means feeding every two to three hours, which is about eight to 12 times, times in 24 hours, or more frequently if needed. Especially in the early months, the mother needs to breastfeed frequently to stimulate milk production. Breast milk is perfectly adapted to the infant's small stomach size because it is quickly and easily digested. The mother gives infants only breast milk for the first six months. That is another key message. Because breast milk contains all the water and nutrients that an infant needs to satisfy its hungers and thirst. Exclusive breastfeeding helps to space bath by delaying the return of fertility. Exclusively, breast, breastfed infants are likely to have fewer diarrhea, respiratory, and ear infections. You should encourage and support the mother to exclusively breastfeed a baby, explaining how it will help both her and the infant. The mother continues breastfeeding when either she or the infant is sick, which is an important key point to note. If the mother is sick with a cold, with a flu or diarrhea, she can continue to breastfeed because breast milk still protect the infant against illness. If the infant is sick, mother has to be breastfed more frequently. The mother has to breastfeed the child more frequently if she's sick so that the infant will recuperate faster. Breast milk replaces water and nutrient loss through frequent loose stools and is the most easily digestible food for the sick infant. The mother's position and uh, the mother must position and attach the infant correctly at the breast. The mother has to, to this, this will help to prevent sore or cracked nipples and stimulate her breast milk supply. And what are the signs that the infant is properly positioned? The infant's whole body is facing the mother and is close to her. The mother's the mother holds infant's entire body, not just the neck and the shoulders. And what are the signs that the infant is properly also the infant's lips must be turned outwards. The infant's chins must touch the mother's breast. The mother's entire nipple and a good and a good portion of the areola are in infant's mouth. More, more areola is showing above rather than below the nipple. The mother offers the second breast after the infant releases the first. The mother has, has to allow the infant to release the first breast before offering the second breast so that the infant receives both full milk which has a high water content to quench the infant's thirst and the end milk which is rich in fat and nutrients. The mother should not give bottles and pacifiers to the breastfed infant so as to prevent um, serious infections. The mother should eat more than usual to give her a nutritional to, to supply her more nutrients and uh, energy. And by the age of six months, the mother of the caregiver must have complementary foods to the to the to the breastfed infant. The key message for optional breastfeeding practices include that the mother initiate breastfeeding within one hour of birth. The mother breastfeeds frequently day and night. The mother gives infant only breast milk for the first six months. The mother continues breastfeeding when Either, either she or the infant is sick. The mother positions and attaches infant correctly at the breast. The mother offers the second breast after the infant releases the first. The mother should eat more than the usual. And by the age of six months, the mother should introduce complementary feed. Let's look at the benefits of breastfeeding the, the baby. Breast milk has many advantages over cow's milk or other formula food, explaining the following benefits. Breast milk has all the necessary nutrients needed for the newborn infant. This is true even if the mother is not taking adequate amount of nutrients for her own needs. Moreover, it is free of contamination and does not need any preparation. It is also self-regulatory. Breast milk secretion occurs based on the needs of the infant. So if there's more feeding, there will be more secretion. If the mother tries to introduce supplementary food, such as formula milk at early stage of life, there will be replacement of the clean, nutritious breast milk by formula or cow milk, which is more likely to be contaminated, resulting in increased risk of infection. Therefore, breast milk should be considered to be a whole food for the infant because it contains balanced proportion and a sufficient quantity of all the nutrients needed for the first six months. Some of the key benefits of breastfeeding is that breast milk is always clean, 
it is ready and at always at the right temperature it is also easily digestible they are usually absorbed they are easily absorbed breast milk also protect against allergies the breast milk antibodies protect the baby's gut by preventing harmful substances from passing into the blood breast milk contains enough water for the baby's need breast milk also has a low protein content which makes it suitable for feeding small infants before their kidneys are fully developed the amount of protein is adequate to promote the normal growth of the baby also breast milk is low in saturated fatty acids and saturated fatty acid from cow's milk may form a hard cord when they react with hydrochloric acid in the baby's stomach which may result in the impacting of the cord in the intestine cow milk is rich in this acid and um, also contains large amounts of protein breast milk is much safer the infant benefits from uh, colostrum and colostrum is the first breast milk that is produced after delivery and protect the baby from diseases the colostrum acts as a laxative, as a laxative cleaning the infant's stomach it is also equivalent to the first baby's immunization as uh, it has many immunologic factors and a high concentration of uh, vitamin let's look at the benefit of breastfeeding for the mother the family and the community as well as breastfeeding bringing benefits to the baby you can explain to the mother that there are important benefits for her and some of these benefits are that breastfeeding is more than 90 percent effective as a contraceptive method during the first six months provided the breastfeeding is exclusive and amenorrhea persists also putting the, putting the baby to the breast immediately after birth facilitates expulsion of the placenta as the baby is suckling it stimulates uterine contraction Breastfeeding reduces risk of bleeding after delivery. Breastfeeding immediately after birth stimulates breast milk production. Immediately, immediate and frequent uh, sucking prevents engorgement of the breast. Breastfeeding reduces the mother's workload. Breastfeeding is available at any time and anywhere and is always kind, nutritious and at the right temperature. Breastfeeding stimulates bonding between mother and baby. The benefits that um, breastfeeding has for the baby in promoting health and optimal growth, it also has some essential economic and social benefit to the family in, in that they, are, they, 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 they don't have to spend money in buying formula and uh, f money in buying firewood or others to f or fuel to boil water, milk or in, in other intenses and there's no medical expenses due to sickness that formula milk might cost. Uh, also, beds are space and thanks to contraceptive effect of breastfeeding. Also, time is saved as breast milk does not need a serious uh, preparation. Breast milk does not require importing formula or intensize, which saves hard currency. Healthy babies make a healthy nation. Breastfeeding leads to a decrease in the number of childhood illnesses. An indirect benefit of breastfeeding is if it is practiced widely, in that, is that environment is protected. And this is because trees are not used for firewood to boil water, milk, and utensils. Breast milk is a natural and renew, renewable resource. Thank you for listening. See you in the next class. Bye for now.